Okay, we're going to get into chapter three this week, and this is where we're going to actually start building um, the structure, the whole building that uh, we'll finish out in the uh, in the rest of the semester. Uh, so we're going to start on uh, exercise 3-1 on page 3-2. Um, just maximize this. And we're going to go ahead and um, start with an architectural template. If you don't have one, you can use your exercise 2-2 you started with, or I will upload one in Blackboard for a template file. So we'll just go ahead and double-click on architectural template. And all right, we're we're there. So to start off with, uh, we're going to go to our uh, level one, which we're already in here because it's highlighted in black, and then go to the manage tab. There it is. View manage. We're going to go to snaps. Not sure if this is necessary, but uh, I want you to check off length, dimension, snap increments. You're going to have 40 feet, 25 feet, and 5 feet with a colon in between. So if yours doesn't have that, go ahead and set it, and then just say OK. Next thing we're going to do is select the Architecture tab, and we're going to go to our Grid options over here. Now when you place grids on a plan like this, uh, the purpose is to set up your structural increments. So we're going to have grids across the top, vertically, and then horizontally uh, to lay out the grid pattern for where your structural columns are going to be located and your spans for your beams and, uh, and trusses. So we're going to click this tool and we're going to create our first grid is going to be over here on the left hand side and just pull this straight up in the air and then hit your escape key twice. If we pull in here now we can see this is labeled with number one. I want you to click on this one, double click the one and change it to a capital A. What will happen now is uh, Revit will actually recognize that and in increments. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do an array of this piece. So we're going to select the grid line and then select the array tool. We're going to set it up uh, so that <coughs> we're going to have group and associate checked off. We're going to set this to number eight, number of column lines we're going to have. We're going to move it to second and we're going to set up a grid distance of 25 feet. So if I just left click on this, pull it to the right, <coughs> key in 25 feet, hit enter, it lays out all of the rest of our columns and actually labels them incrementally from A to H. So the next thing we're going to do is set up our horizontal grid pattern. And we're going to lay this out across the bottom. So again we're going to select our grid and uh, I'm going to run this across the bottom in this direction. Hit escape twice. We're going to pull in now and this one is set to um, to 1. Now it looks like it's a 1 but it's actually an I so just double click on this and make sure you change this to number 1. I got fooled because the last one they had here was H so it tries to make that an I. And what we want is numbers on the horizontals, letters on the verticals. And it actually gives you a place once we get this in, in place so you can locate something on a plan and say it's near uh, the, the intersection of A1 which would be over in this area or B1 in this area. So anyway, let's select this. We're going to select our array tool again. This time we're going to set the number to 2 actually set the number group and associate set this number to three and uh, enable to second left click here pull it up we're going a distance of 40 feet and there we 
we have it. So we can see these go 1, 2, and 3, A through 1. So E2 would be this location, this column location here. And next thing we're going to do is uh, select everything on the screen. Go to your filter tool and say, I only want to see um, it should be just the grid lines. I don't even see the grid lines here, so let me check that off. Window around the grid line, so okay, doing that. Maybe I didn't get them all. Filter. Should have picked just those. Well, the point is, let me select them again. Showing them all. Let's do a file save before we lose things. And we'll do a save as project. And we're going to put this on my desktop. CA 101 home. Revit files. I'm going to call it CIE 101 building 2016 and hit save. Yes, I know I already have one, but you won't. So go ahead and do that. While you're doing that, I'm just going to check this one more time and see if that... I think it's because I'm in another type of... picking up on my project browser rather than my individual pieces so we won't worry about it it just wanted us to lock those in anyway so we're fine now we're going to move on to exercise 3-2 so we're going to uh, type in once this is open which it already is type VG and we're going to move down to um, annotation categories right up here on the tab and we're going to go down turn off the visibility of the elevations so we're just going to come down into this location we see elevations just turn that off and hit OK and what that does is it gets rid of those elevation tags that are setting out there it won't delete them but it just gets them out of the place out of, out of the way now we're going to start putting some walls in here. So we're going to select our wall tool. We're going to just go ahead with our 8 inch generic for now. And uh, we're going to select this bottom grid line. And I'm going to go up a distance of 20 feet right there. Left click, pull it over to this grid line. And it should say at the top it's uh, the location of the line is wall center line, which by default it should anyway. Bring it down, and we're going to cover two grid lines. So there's our outside wall. And we're going to window around these walls that I placed. And if we click the filter tool now, it just says walls. And that's fine. So just say okay. 
that's just a checkmate. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mirror these lines. So we select them again. We're going to select our mirror tool. And I'm going to pick this axis right here. And it's going to create a mirror of those walls up above. And we're going to select our wall tool. And we'll just connect these two endpoints together to create the end. Um, we're going to mirror these. We're going to select. Well, they want us to draw another. I'm going to hold off on this. From I'm going to escape twice, but I'm going to change this up just a little bit. I'm going to select these walls. I'm going to do a mirror. And uh, needs to be right in the center of this area. So hit escape first. I, I, I did this before, and I just want to make sure I get it. I'm going to draw a line between this point and this point. So it gives me a line to use as a mirroring axis. Now if I select these walls. And mirror. Then I can find this center point. Actually, let's draw use it the draw line tool, and then I can get right into the center of it. And that way, these walls make up the difference. They make sure they're on the center of the center line on this end. Now we can go back in here and finish up our walls. We're going up. You'll notice it'll find that point across there, all the way over to this location, and then down to the connector. And up at the top, we're just going to connect these two walls together. So we can select our trim tool, and just select this wall and this wall, and it will bring those together. So this is our basic outline of our floor plan. Now we've got a couple of... Uh, lines that uh, don't fall on grid. So we're going to create some intermediate grid points in the structural. So if we go back to our architecture and grid, what we can do is select this wall. We want the center point. And I'm going to bring this over to this area. Hit Escape. If I select this, double click this, it's going to be 1.5. So it's halfway in between. And we can grab this end point here and extend it out until it lines up. And then we're going to have a couple of lines up here on the top between G and H and A and B. So we'll do this one first. And those are 25 feet apart. So I want to make sure I get them located. 12 foot 6 inches is the distance off. So we're going to go to our grid. Start here at the bottom. And just go over 12 foot 6 inches. And I can just key in 12 foot 6 inches. There we go. Pull it straight up. Hit escape. And double click on this one. This one will be G. 0.5. I believe we go left to right. Yep. So it's G, capital G, 0.5. And we're going to do another one on this side. Again, we're going over 12 foot 6 inches. Go straight up. Lock it in. Hit escape. And this one, oops. This would be A. Might as well leave my caps lock on. A.5. There we go. So we're on page 3-12 now. And what we're going to do is, is move some walls. Um, we're going to activate the 
Modify ribbon. We're going to select our alignment tool. And we're going to select this wall. Oops, excuse me. Select the grid line first. And then this wall. Took me out of the tool. This line. This wall. This line. And this wall. So we're bringing these walls over to that line. We're going to do the same thing on this one. Hit escape a couple times. Alignment tool. This is my alignment plane. And this is my wall. Oops. Didn't get the center. So that one. Why it's not lining up on the center? This one. Oh, that one did the same thing, didn't it? Don't want that. So I'm going to back it up. Go back to the book. Oh, I know why. Select the alignment tool. Change it to wall center line. And select select multiple alignment paste to read the book so we're gonna select that align tool we want this one and this is the wall still did it all right wait a minute align says select maybe I need to do it let's try this one align select the center line I want to select there we go select the center of the wall so it lines up there Hit escape a couple times we'll do the same thing this way just wasn't picking up that center line of the wall there we go so now we've got our outside floor plan so it should look like um, number 32 on page 3-13 when you're done we're going to skip over exercise 3-3 which involves converting an AutoCAD floor plan which is kind of gets away from what we're what we're doing here so we're going to skip right up to exercise 3-4 which is our exterior wall construction so what we're going to do here is actually um, select the wall and then chain, uh, customize the wall type for the outside uh, which is actually it's a little funky but it's uh, it's something that you should know how to do so we're going to select the entire floor plan like that hit the filter tool just make sure that walls is the only thing selected and just say OK so we can see we've got our generic wall up here what we want to do is select um, edit type and we want to duplicate this and we're going to give it a name we're going to call it exterior I'll just use ext 3 and 5 8 brick hyphen 5 8 inch chip some okay hit okay so now we've created this new wall type using the 8 inch as a um, template and then we just want to hit edit and we can see hit your preview so it's going to show you a preview of your wall so we're just going to be working in this screen right now so we got to kind of line things up we've got actually seven layers to this wall and uh, the first one on the core boundary I just want to move that down if I can and I guess I need to put something in here so start with two I'm gonna make number two is gonna be a finish one and then we're gonna insert 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 
I think now I can come up here and move that down. So it's the third one down. We're going to move this one and we'll leave that one where it is. That one should be finish one four. Then we're going to have number two is going to be a thermal air barrier. Number three is going to be a substrate. Now we've got a core boundary. And then we've got number five, which is a um, structure one. And we've got another core boundary. I'm going to insert one more and then grab this one and move it up. So the last thing down here, if you look on page uh, 3-21 on item 12, this last one is going to be finish 2 for layer 5. So it should look just like this when it's done. So we're going to start with the material and finish 1. And finish 1, this is going to be brick. So if you click this material, we're going to get a menu that comes up. Hopefully. There we go. Just type in brick or BRI. There we go. We want common brick. And our surface pattern, if you click this, you can see you can select different patterns. This was an elevation. We do want the brick pattern. And our diagonal cut will be looking like that. And on the appearance tab, we can see this is the brick, how it's going to look from the outside when we put that on there. And uh, we probably, I'm not sure if we want to use, yeah, that's what they're using. So we'll, we'll stick with that one. And now we just say, okay. Now the thickness of that material is going to be three and five eighths inches. So we just type in three and five eighths and hit down to the next one. You can see now my wall changes. So it shows my outside as three and five eighths. The next thing we've got is a thermal barrier. Uh, it's going to be one inch, so we're just going to click on this one. Type in air. And there's air infiltration barrier. And hit OK. And this one is going to be one inch. Go down to the next one. So you can see our one inch air barrier that allows water to get down in between the brick and the interior wall. We're going to have some plywood sheathing next as our substrate too. So we're going to click our category. We're going to type in plywood. And there's plywood sheathing. And that has a thickness of one half inch. So we just say OK. Change this to one half inch. down to our structure one on the inside and let's see what do we have for structure one it's going to be our stud layer so click and I'll just type in stud we should see a metal stud we'll say okay and that stud is going to be a six inch And now we get down to our final finish, which is going to be gypsum. Wall board, 5 8 inch. So we'll just type in gypsum. Wall board. Hit OK. We're going to type in 5 8 of an inch. And now we've got our entire wall structure here in detail. Brick, air barrier. Um, plywood, metal studs, and sheetrock. That'll make up our outside wall. So we'll just say OK now and hit OK again. Because I had these selected, you'll notice now, and if we pull this up, you don't see much difference, but if I change this now to a fine detail, you can see it's showing my wall, brick, airspace, plywood, studs, and sheetrock. But it's backwards. So we're going to have to select each of these walls and flip them. 
so that the brick goes to the outside of the building. It's an easy thing to do. Just work your way all the way around and flip those walls to the outside. Just hitting a little arrowhead. this once I thought it was already there and it's like no you're not there yet one more there we go now our brick is all on the outside so if we actually look at this in elevation on our south side now in uh, realistic mode it's going to show brick or if I just show hidden line shade it's just going to be red So there's our brick on the outside of the building. Change it back to a hidden line file. And there was one other thing I think they did on the wall structure. Let me see if I skip something. I don't think so. Or maybe I haven't gotten there yet. No, I think we're good. Okay. So now we're going to add some interior walls. Go back to level one. And we're going to start on exercise 3-5 on our floor plans. And once we get these done, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do a, a video recording for the rest of the assignment. That'll be the second part that'll make this uh, something that will be due. But we'll at least try to get the uh, interior petitions in for the basic floor plan. So we're going to be in level one. I'm going to zoom in on this and uh, go to our architecture wall tool. And this time we're going to use a 3 and one eighth inch interior petition. So if we just drop down our walls, you should see 3 and 1 8 inch, 1 hour petition. So just click on that. And we've got uh, one set of corridor walls. So I'm just going to start here. If I move my mouse up, I'm just going to type in 5 feet. So it starts my wall. I'm going to go all the way down to this line about halfway through. Just left click here. We can move this later. We're going down 10 feet and then all the way back to the original. So there's my first corridor wall. Then make sure you're at wall center line here too. Back here on the wall, I'm going to start on this column line. Third one over. We pull this up 14 feet, or no, sorry, 17 feet. Pull it over uh, 14 feet and then back down to the original. This is actually going to be a stair tower. And then we're going to come over to this wall, bring it all the way down into the center. This wall comes all the way down to the center. And then come up here, find that point. I'm going over 14, uh, 14 feet. Actually, I just want to probably do this together. So we've got 14 and 14 is 28. Plus 28 is 56. We're going over 57 feet. And then straight down. And you can see my walls don't line up here. That's okay. Just bring it down. I'm just going to leave it setting right there for now. I'm going to take this wall. And we're going to move this wall. Center point. Well, I want to, I'm going to move it out further. There we go. That way I can just move it back. So then I can just grab this one, pull it down until it intersects. Now if I grab this wall and move it from this center line to 
So that center line right there, now they line up. So it's just a cheat way to, a cheating way to get these uh, to work. So I'm going to go over 14 feet, pull it straight down. 14 feet again, pull it straight down. We're going over one foot. This is a pipe chase for a restroom. And then we're going over 14 feet again and straight down. Hit escape. Now we've got some cleanup work to do. That's all right. Actually, just let's just keep putting our walls in. Uh, this goes all the way down till it intersects the outside wall. If I come over here on this side, just left click. Uh, and pull it up, intersect that wall, and it goes up, and I want to just pull it up in this direction. You're going to type in 10 foot 6 inches, you bring this wall all the way over to intersect. Now we got some cleanup to do. you got to take out some walls. So if I just take my split element and just left click right here, and left click right here. Now I want to trim this. So take your trim tool and I want to trim this wall to this wall and I want to trim this wall to this wall this wall to this wall. Oops. Must not have got cancel that. Didn't get split. There we go. Now I got a split on it. Try it again. Much better. Alright, so when you're done it should look like the illustration on page 3-27 without the dimensions. We don't need those just yet. Alright. If we turn this now to a three-dimensional view, which I don't have one here yet, so I'm just going to click the little house up here. It's going to give me my standard 3D view and now I'll see it here. There's my 3D view. And you can see we've got our outside walls and then we've got our interior petitions which are just going up to the 10 foot mark on the elevations. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, take these interior walls that are going to be stair towers and extrude those all the way up to the second through the second floor so they match the outside wall so we're going to go to our south elevation first make sure i get this right Okay, let's just go to the south elevation. So we can see that some of these lines are buried inside the wall. So we're going to select the uh, level line. I'll just select this one. If I right click, you can say maximize. 3D elements, they're 3D extents, and it brings them outside. So I'll do the same thing with this one if I can get it selected. Right click, and now we're going to add in this one. We want to bring these up. So I'm going to select this, I'll select one of these. Oh, I know. You select this. And I guess I got to hit escape a couple times there. It shouldn't be pinned. There we go. I should be able to pull this up.
going to hit escape. Go back to my plan one. So we didn't pin those. They're shown as locked. That one is. Alright. So what I did is I selected it, said edit group, and then brought it up. So what we want is these uh, elevation lines to be up above. So we're, we're good now. Now we're going to add another level 3. Um, so we're going to select the architectural tab, select level. We're going to create 10 feet up. Bring this all the way down. You'll see where it lines up here. Level 3. Hit escape. And we're going to rename level 3 roof line. So just click right on the text. You're going to type in roof line. And unclick it. Yes. So now we have level one, level two, and roof line over here. So now we're going back to our level one floor plan. And we're taking our uh, modify tool. So we're going to go to modify. We're going to select our split element tool right here. Um, we're going to uncheck, make sure it's unchecked where it says delete inner line segment or inner segment. And in the book it shows you where to left click on these things. So we're going to left click right here, right here. We're going to do this intersection and we're going to do that intersection. Hopefully I got it. Now holding down the control key, pick the walls indicated. I'm trying to make sure I get these. Yep. So now we're going to select, hit the escape key, Select and drag through, and it should highlight. Oops, I want this one first. Hold down the control key and select these four. So those are the ones that want to be elevated. And we just come over here to the top constraint and say we want those to go up to the roof line and hit apply. Now, if that worked correctly, if we go to our 3D roof uh, model now, we'll see that these rooms are extended all the way up through the second floor. So these are our stair towers. They're going to be our bathrooms. Um, we don't have a floor in there yet, but uh, they'll actually end up being that. So if you look at the illustration on page um, uh, 3-33, you'll see the same view that I'm looking at here. Now activate level 2, floor plan. You'll see we can see the other rooms down below. We don't want to necessarily see those walls from the first floor. So under the underlay tool right here, it's showing level 1. And we're just going to change that to none and hit apply. And when you do that, you don't see the walls on the first floor 
all you're seeing are the walls on the second floor that are going to be visible. So if I go to level one, looks like this. Level two is going to look like this. Okay. We'll do a file, save. And um, I think that's that's what we're going to uh, do in lab is this far on Monday and Wednesday. And I'm going to do a video um, for the other portion of the class to add the doors. And you can follow along in the textbook if you like um, all the way through until we get to the stairs. We're going to put the stairs in. And once we have the stairs, then we'll have something we can output to a drawing for our assignment. So we're going to go up to page 3-56 on the video that I'll do online for you. And so I'm going to stop this video now as part one in lab, and then part two will be outside the lab or the uh, online portion of the class for this week. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file save one more time. CIE building 2016. And I'm going to stop this video.